I'm Maria Brandon. I am one of the personal trainers and the running coach at Great Lakes Athletic Club. Um, this is our cardio room here behind me and I'm here to talk to you about how to safely and within policy use the cardio room. So you'll see in here we have a bunch of treadmills, ellipticals, some rowers, a bunch of different machines and we're not going to go through all of them but the biggest thing when you're in here don't get on a piece of equipment that you're not quite comfortable with yet. And that's not to discourage you from trying new things. All we ask is that before you do, get help from me or one of our other trainers and we can show you how to safely use that. We're gonna do that with a treadmill shortly. So item number one, be comfortable with the equipment you're using. Um, number two, you'll see on my wrist, I have a pink wristband. These wristbands are for our 11, 12, 13, and 14 year olds. So our newer members who have just aged into adult membership. We want you guys to grab one of these wristbands at the front desk when you check in so that we know that you're of age to be using the cardio room and other areas of the facility like an adult. And this is as much for your convenience as it is for our knowledge. We don't want your, in your workout to be interrupted by us stopping you, asking you if you're old enough to be working out. Um, that being said, looking at these equipments, you can see that someone who is a different size might struggle more so on a particular piece of equipment than another. So again, see a trainer and we can help you get either fitted or adjusted or find the equipment that's best for you. Um, a couple policy notes. We do ask that everyone working out in the cardio room wear proper athletic footwear. So we're talking tennis shoes, shoelaces, something covering and containing your foot very safely. And we also ask that you are conscious of that footwear being clean and uh, slit proof. So we get some inclement weather here in Michigan. If you're walking in a parking lot full of salt and snow, it might be a good idea to wear some boots and then change into your tennis shoes before getting on the machines. Again, both to avoid slip hazards, but also to keep our machines safe and functional for your use. All right, so come on with me over here. We're going to talk about how to safely use the treadmill. <laughs> All right, so hopping on to one of our Cybex treadmills here. These are the ones I typically teach my cadence classes on. So you can check that out on the group fitness schedule. And I'm gonna demonstrate first just how to, you know, basic turn the treadmill on, start moving, but also some form mishaps we tend to see from runners going from a treadmill for going from a track to a treadmill outside to a treadmill so we'll go through some of that um something else i want to point out as i'm on here um the point of doing a workout in a room like this a cardio type workout is to condition our heart and lungs and we actually have some devices here available for purchase our my zone technology and if you see that blue oh now green square on the screen behind me that is from one of our trainers, Bethany, using my zone. It's actually measuring her effort and heart rate. So if I were to go for a run or hop on an elliptical and use that, you would see my effort on the screen in front of you. But back to the treadmill. All right, so for this particular treadmill, I'm going to just hit quick start. It's gonna give me a little three, two, one countdown. It's gonna start moving super slow. And I'm only gonna pick up the pace to a pace at first that I know I'm very comfortable running at. So no need to dive into sprints or anything else, but coming just to a nice, easy jog. And something I'll see from a lot of runners who are going from the road or track to a treadmill is this tendency to wanna run up really close to the treadmill. And you're compromising your stride that way. So let yourself relax. Typically you have more space behind you on the treadmill than you think you do. Think nice, long running alignment. Relax where you can. Look at your feet beneath you. Look forward. That's something else you'll see from runners on the treadmill a lot is wanting to look down at the screen and you're compromising your alignment that way too. So looking forward as often as you can. Some people struggle with equilibrium when it comes to getting on the treadmill and running in place. So I'm totally okay if I see some people needing to brace themselves a little bit. That's what these rails are here for. What I don't want to see is this. It's not good for our treadmill and it's not good for your fitness either. So those are just a couple cues. You can increase the pace here with these up and down arrows. You can increase the incline here. 
an awesome tool to get a great workout, whatever your fitness level is. <laughs> All right, jumping off the treadmill now, let's take a look at our elliptical. All right, so this is one of our ellipticals. We have various types in the cardio room and they are not one size fits all. So you might wanna try a few different ones and see which one feels best for you. I personally love this Cybex one. It's a great low impact um, choice if you're not into running. Um, anyway, so a lot of people will see these screens turned off and think that these machines are not working but really they're self-powered, so you have to step on and then start moving in order for them to cue you to start your workout. So I place my feet right about in the center of these pedals. And what's really cool about this machine is you can adjust it to the type of workout you're looking to get. So I can find a stride that feels more like a run, more like a stair climb, a mountain climb, and play with that accordingly. So I'm moving here, you'll see the screen turned on. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit quick start. Telling me to go. So, moving here, and you will see on the screen too, you can go through and enter different data about yourself. You can choose a different workout. Really, there's a lot to play with here. So, just like on the treadmill, you'll see two sides of the screen. I can change either my incline so say I'm going up a little higher hill. Oh, I'm changing my stride here, sorry, not my incline. I can change my stride. So getting my knees up a little higher here. Or I can change the resistance. So this is gonna change what I am having to push against. And you'll see as I play with the stride and the resistance, different colors will light up on this guy here. That's showing you the different muscles you're activating more so than the other ones. So just like the treadmill, you wanna stand up nice and tall. Again, you can play with either the resistance or the stride to get the workout you're looking for. Um, one last thing I'll add about something like an elliptical is to make sure you are adding resistance. Some things we'll see a lot from people on these machines is going on resistance zero because it allows you to move faster. But just because you're moving faster doesn't mean you're necessarily getting the best workout you could possibly get. So make sure you do add some resistance even if it's not a crazy amount. Hello, I'm Bethany DeSantis. I'm one of the trainers over at GLAC, and I'm here to show you the free weight room. This room is usually more experienced lifters, but we do have a lot of younger and newer lifters coming in, so I just wanna go over a couple things that will help keep the gym clean and everybody can get a good workout in, and everybody can stay safe. Um, one big thing that you might have noticed around the gym is we're trying to label everything um, so you have somewhere to put your weights away. We're trying to keep everything off the floor. So if you're going to put your weights away and you want to put the 20s away and the spot is not there, we ask that you just switch them to the right spot so we can continue to get them where the stickers are labeled so everybody can have a safe and clean environment. The free weight area here is designed for members and guests 11 and up. If you're from the age of 11 to 14, we do ask that you stop at the front desk and get your pink wristband before you enter this free weight area. This is our cable machine area. We've got all sorts of attachments um, to connect to. We just ask that when you're done with the attachments, you return them to the hooks here or the bigger accessories. We can bring them right over to this accessory rack. We're trying really hard to keep our floors clean, keep things off the floor so we have a nice accessible pathway to the elevator and to the fire escape. So we would really appreciate any help in that and leaving it better than you found it. If you need any help and how to operate any of the equipment, just feel free to ask any of us at the desk or if you see us on the floor.
You'll notice that we have plate weights throughout the gym. We've done our best to label the pegs for where they go. A good rule of thumb is the lightest weights are gonna go on top, going all the way down to the heaviest. So we also, along with that, we have these plate trees throughout the gym, which are also labeled, but if you always think, rule of thumb, lightest weight's gonna go on the top. Here we've got the 35s on top of the 45s. And then over here, same thing, five, tens, 25s. Putting the plates back where they belong keeps everybody safe, lets everybody have a better workout, and we'd really appreciate your efforts in doing so. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Josh Williams, a fitness coach and nutrition coach over here at Great Lakes Athletic Club, Orion Township. And I'm here to kind of show you guys today our Olympic room. So our Olympic room is a room that is designed here for you to perform your more complicated compound lifts, Olympic lifts like your squat, your bench, your deadlift, your power cleans, rows, anything that you might need a barbell and some heavy bumper weights for, or something with a padded floor. So the Olympic room is here and available for all members 11 through 14 with a pink wristband and 14 and up without, as long as you're a member. What I'm here to show you first is I want to show you guys how our weights are returned back to the proper position and how we set them up to keep our gym clean, tidy, and accessible to all of our members, okay? On the inside of the rack here, you'll see that you have your two and a half pound plates up high as well as your 10 pound plates low. All weights are racked lightest on top, heaviest to the bottom. On the outside of the rack here, you'll see that we have all of our 25 pound bumper plates up top with our 45 and 55 pound plates below down here. It's expected as you're part of the GLAC community that you return your weights back to the place where you got them after you're finished lifting. Remember, if you're strong enough to lift the weight, you're strong enough to put it back, okay? Over here, we also have our clips that we're gonna have you use for safety whenever you need them for your lifts, okay? So all of our clips are gonna be returned to this clip bin when you're finished, and you should have a very large plethora of clips to choose from down in that little tin bin, okay? Over here, I wanna show you guys as well um, the other racks and how those are set up. So here we have our other Olympic racks and our squat racks here that we have in the Olympic room. This is one of our major squat racks right here. All of, these, all of this equipment is adjustable, so you can move these racks to wherever you want them to fit your height or your stature. And the weight is organized a little bit differently on these squat racks. Again, we still follow the rule of the lightest weight on top and the heaviest weight on bottom. Over here, it's a little different though, because we have these specialized racks for different types of weights. This is what we just kind of uh, uh, consider our overstock rack, right? So if there's not enough room on, uh, on one of the pegs, we put all the extra weight here on these plates, as well as specialized plates too. So right here, you can see this is where we put our 55 pound plates, which normally would go on the bottom or with the 45s. But if there's not enough room for these, you'll put the 55s right on this rack as well as we're going to have our 10 pound and five pound spacer plates. These guys will go on this rack as well. It's very important that when you're performing compound lifts, especially when you're pushing yourself to the upper limit, that you are either asking for a spotter, working out with an experienced personal trainer and or partner, or you're setting up your safeties. If you are a person who lifts alone like I do, please make sure that you set up your safeties. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up your safeties right now for something like a squat so that you know that you're safe and you can bail on the weight appropriately if you come into a knee, okay? So for myself, I generally know that I'm gonna to have to set these safeties up at about the nine or the 10 mark. All of these little racks right here have numbers associated with them. So once you find that sweet spot one time, you'll have it for the rest of your life, okay? I'm gonna set these safeties up right here for myself. Make sure that the safeties are set up on the same number and they're not on a different number because that will defeat the purpose of the safety and you won't necessarily be able to bail on the weight accordingly, okay? So when you're performing a squat, if you get under the rack and you get stuck on the bottom, you have nowhere to go if you don't have a spotter. So you'll want to be able to either dump forward. Now you can see that these safeties were not set up appropriately for me. I was one off. So what you'll want to make sure you do is test this with just the bar beforehand so you don't hurt yourself. So for me, 10 is the sweet spot.
You'll go ahead and get underneath your rack. Make sure that you test it appropriately again. Get into your squat. Look, I'm stuck. Now I'm safe. This is the best way to bail on weight. There are other ways that you can bail on weight as well if you get stuck at the bottom of a squat, but this is gonna be your safest one. If you're not sure how to set these safeties up even after watching this video, please ask for a trainer up at the front desk and we'll be happy to show you how to use the equipment appropriately. Thanks again and my name is Josh if you guys need anything. Hi guys, it's Regan with Great Lakes Athletic Club and you are on our upstairs trek. This area is available to members and guests ages 11 and up. 11 to 14 year olds will receive a pink wristband upon check-in to know that they're okay to be upstairs in this area. As you can see, we've got an arrow pointing to the direction that you're going to be running on any given day. That arrow will change on a daily basis so that your body does not get acclimated to turning only in one direction. We do ask that you follow the direction on that day. The distance of the track on the outside lane, 10 laps around equals one mile. Okay, this is one of our newer pieces of, of equipment we've got here, leg extension. I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour on how to set it up for your individual body. So I'm gonna start by sitting down. Your legs are gonna go behind this padding. I'm gonna start with adjusting the back. Usually everything that's colorful means it's gonna move, so I'm gonna grab this back here so my low back's nice and supported against the padding. Next, I'm gonna check my knee alignment with this big bolt here. I wanna make sure that I'm seated into the seat, can pull down on the handles, and my knee is in line here. This one here is gonna change your range of motion if you wanna shorten it or lengthen it. This one here is gonna change the placement of here. I wanna pull it up a little bit here so it's more on my shins instead of my feet. Then we've got over here is the weight stack. Moving the pin, you have to take the pressure off first, then put the pin in. This little handle here, you can add five pounds. Then once you're ready, you're gonna test it by extending the knees, making sure that that knee is right in line with that big bolt. Pulling down on the handles to keep your body locked into place, getting full extension of those knees down nice and slow. What we don't want to do is go too heavy on this and then have to drop the weight stack. That damages the equipment. Nice and slow and controlled. If you can't control it, try going a little bit lower. Okay. Okay, this is our seated leg curl machine. You're gonna start by sitting down, starting with the back adjustments. We want to scooch back a little bit so that the back of your knees is close, close to here. On this machine, we've got a nice red dot here. This is where we're trying to line our knees up to. So you can kind of adjust the back so that you get the right positioning there. Then your feet are gonna come up here. You can see this one's a little bit wide for me. There's a lot of adjustments here. So I'll start with moving this down a little bit so that it's on the back of my legs here. This one over here is gonna change your range of motion. So you'll see here, I'll get a much shorter range of motion. Up here, much more stretch in the muscle. Our last, well, second to last, we're gonna lower this down so it's nice and snug onto your legs. And then lastly, we've got the weight over here. So you're gonna put the pin all the way in. You can add these for five pound increments. Bracing on here, keeping that back down keeping that low back pushed into the padding. You're gonna pull those legs towards the seat. Again, releasing nice and slow, controlled motions so we're not banging up the machines. Then when you're finished, you return it to the starting position, release the legs, then you can slide out to rest for your next set. My name's Jen, I'm one of the personal trainers here at Great Lakes Athletic Club, and today I'm gonna show you how to kind of get set up here on the leg press machine. So right here, 
you're gonna see there's a little picture. It's gonna show you exactly the muscles that you're working today, all in the lower body. And this is gonna kind of be how you're gonna set it up. You're gonna see how it's going to push back, where your back should be angled at, and where your feet should be angled at. So first I'm gonna set this up for my own body. Using this machine before, I know that I'm about a three, but if I don't know that I'm a three, that I am at a three, I'm gonna to wanna to get on this machine, test out, make sure my body is properly aligned, use light weight, and get set up before I go heavy into my weight and heavy into my reps. So three, I'm set up here. I already know I'm set up here with a three, but if not, I were to pull this up, pull it forward so it's to come closer to my chest, or back and make sure that it clicks in. Then I wanna sit. My feet are gonna come up to about a 90 degree angle. I wanna make sure that it's kind of close to my chest because I wanna get full range, but that, not that I'm so squished in. Make sure my hips are lined up with knees. That way I'm fully gonna work my glutes, my hamstrings, and my quads. I'm gonna test this weight out first, holding on to the handles, extending back, and then I wanna come forward, stopping short of the weight set here and making sure that it feels right before I go heavy into weight. So that feels good. So I'm gonna adjust my weight the way I want it to be. With the pin, I'm going to input it into the plate that I want it to be at. And then I'm gonna get ready to do my sets. Again, checking my form, making sure everything is in alignment, that my hips and back are pushed in. I'm gonna extend out with a little bit of power. Again, making sure my knees are not locked. And then I'm gonna bring it back, stopping just short of that plate, and then pushing back again. And I'm just gonna work that until I'm working my set number, and then I'm slowly gonna lower. Do not let the plates crash. And then safely get off of the machine. All right, so I'm, today I'm gonna demonstrate how to work our hammer strength chest press. It's one of our most popular chest press machines up on the upper level. Again, if you wanna take a look at what muscles it's working and where your start and finish point should be, there's a picture right here on the back side of the machine. You always wanna adjust your seat first so that your joint is even with the markers. In order to do that, you just push up on this lever and either adjust it up or down. I had mine set already about where I wanted to set. Then before I get on, I wanna adjust my weight. So on this stack, we have two sides. So it's dual sided. Again, you're gonna pull out the pin and then set it on the weight you want it and make sure that you adjust both sides. All right, then I'm gonna climb in, make sure my form is proper. I'm pushed all the way back, core is braced, shoulders are pulled back, down and in. And I wanna always make sure I'm getting that full extension and then drive it down so that it's even stopping again just before the plates hit. Drive up and back in. And again, shooting for your goal and what you're looking for in your sets and in your reps. Hi, let's take a look at the free motion row here. So these are great because they're set up with handles that are set up already for you. So we advise that you do not interchange the handles on the machines. Next, it's got the pictures exactly on the front of different rows. So you have your seated two arm row, one arm row, and then you can also bring this to your feet and stand up. So as always, you wanna set your machine up first, making sure that this is tucked close to the knees. So we pull this lever out and either adjust it up or down, make sure that it locks. And then we wanna set our weight. Again, pulling the pin out and then setting it for the weight you're ready to move at. Now we wanna come over, grab our handles, sit down, lock those legs in. Again, check that core, strong core. Pull the shoulders back, shoulder blades down. We're gonna rotate our hands in for a narrow row. And then we're gonna pull back, squeezing the shoulder blades, and then extending all the way up and pulling all the way back down again. Again, slow motion. We don't wanna be 
doing this on the machine. Pull it down, extend it back, watch that weight plate. And slowly put it in. Thanks for joining us today. So today you saw us demonstrate five different exercises that would be a perfect blueprint to get started in your workout regimen. If you have any questions and you want to take that training level and kick it up a notch, reach out to one of our personal trainers. We appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, please visit our website at orientparks.com. Thank you.